For almost two years, Albertans have been told that coal-fired power generation is a risk to their health and to climate change. The 2013 report entitled A Costly Diagnosis, issued by Pembina Institute, is now being challenged by Friends of Science Society with their evidence-based review entitled Burning Questions. Norm Kalmanovich is a professional geophysicist. He is lead content contributor, project manager, and co-author of the report. Pembina Institute claimed that emissions of microscopic fine particulate matter, less than 2.5 microns, from coal-fired power plants are causing health issues for Albertans. Kalmanovich disputes that claim. There's no visible PM 2.5 coming out of coal-fired power plants. On the other hand, uh, you can see um, forest fires with big smoke from, from satellites. Uh, you can smell the smoke, you can see the smoke. Indeed, Friends of Science Research revealed that PM 2.5 emissions from wildfire smoke in Alberta in 2011 was 1,000 times that of the PM 2.5 emissions from coal-fired power plants and with much greater risks to health. Moreover, some 60 to 80 percent of wildfires are caused by humans and therefore preventable. Visible smoke contains uh, PM 2.5, uh, as well as a whole bunch of uh, very complex polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And, um, and for the most part, and for a large part, these are carcinogenic, and they're not very well controlled. You can actually see black smoke, which means um, PM 2.5 emissions are taking place, uh, but what you can't see is the high level of this PAH um, pollution uh, that's, uh, that's carcinogenic. Two recent studies, one from British Columbia and the other from Quebec, affirm the chronic health impacts of wildfires. But more than that, some wildfires create tremendous fire clouds, known as pyrocumulonimbus clouds. U.S. Naval Research Labs are examining their impact on climate change. Researcher Mike Fromm explains. Pyrocumulonimbus storms have injected smoke and other pollutants from biomass burning into the lowermost stratosphere when in the past often these very same particles were deemed to be caused by volcanic eruptions. These extraordinary fires have massive energy equivalent releases as shown in this graph. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima was 13 kiloton TNT equivalent. The Slave Lake Fire Complex release was 28 megatons. The Chisholm Pyro CB cloud went higher than jets fly above the tropopause, allowing ash, aerosols, and particulate matter to travel freer and faster across the globe. The smoke palls that are created in the stratosphere from pyro cumulonimbus storms are important climatologically because they may absorb enough radiation from the sun to warm the atmosphere and cause changes in the weather. They also might cool the air that we uh, breathe significantly or at least enough that we need to understand the effect of the smoke pall that could be uh, large over a whole hemisphere. Satellite imagery of pyro CB clouds, masses of black smoke filled with PM 2.5 and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, you will never see that coming out of a power plant in Alberta. Clearly wildfires have a far more significant impact on climate change and human health in Alberta. Kalmanovich argues that coal-fired power plants in Alberta use modern technology that virtually eliminates PM 2.5 emissions. In 2007, uh, Alberta was the first uh, province in Canada to use uh, what's called supercritical boiler technology, mm -hmm. um, which raises the efficiency of coal-fired uh, power plants from 36 to 44 uh, percent, which means that you use a lot less fuel for each kilowatt of energy generated, um, as well. Um, it, because of the high temperatures, uh, combined with everything else, it's about as close to uh, pollution-free as you can get mm -hmm. for any power source. 
everything is state of the art as far as pollution control. That's probably the least needed because with the pulverized coal technology and the supercritical boiler technology, there's not all that much PM 2.5 to actually uh, to deal with. Friends of Science Research also revealed that there are numerous other sources of PM 2.5, much larger than that from coal-fired power plants. None of these other sources or their contributions are mentioned in the Pembina Institute report A Costly Diagnosis. And as for climate change and coal-fired power plants? Go back 2,000 years. You have the Roman Optimum of about uh, 200 AD that was much warmer than today. You have the medieval warm period um, about a thousand years ago that was warmer than today, than any temperatures today. Read the Friends of Science Society's report, Burning Questions, an evidence-based review of the Alberta phase-out coal campaign, now online. <laughs>